What's up? Welcome to the Confluence VC podcast. This podcast is meant to give you a personal glimpse into the next era of investors and operators. This week we had on Cheryl Campos, who works as head of venture growth and partnerships at Republic. For those that aren't familiar, Republic allows for both accredited and non-accredited investors to invest directly in startups through their platform. In this talk, we asked Cheryl about her multiple talents outside of her day job, her roles as an investment partner with the Community Fund and as a scout with Lightspeed, how Republic is democratizing access into vetted startups, and the benefits of investing in the underrepresented founders. Yo, what's good, everybody? We got the amazing Cheryl Campos in the building. One of the dopest VCs, both in and out of the industry for a myriad of reasons. We're honored to have her in our presence and excited to, to have her with me and Clay to just present her to, to, the, to the Confluence world. So to kick it off, Cheryl, Hello. why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, about your path, and, and maybe let's try to keep it under three minutes because we got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> How far back do you want to go? Do you want to go to like my childhood dreams, my celebrity crushes, all of that? No? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So. <laughs> so anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm a big Confluence person, so I appreciate you guys inviting me onto the podcast. So I'm a native New Yorker, born and raised. I went to Harvard, major in economics, went straight into banking and private equity because I had to be the breadwinner of my family. My brother, who is the golden child, was going to save lives and be a doctor and be in debt for forever. So Did he also go to Harvard? Did he also do Harvard? Am I... Yeah, he also went to Harvard. My mom was a single mother and raised us both up to be Harvard graduates, first generation. She's the person that should be on this podcast, first of all. And we got we to gotta add, add a sound effect for like round of applause for her. I mean, <laughs> we can do that right now, guys. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Long story short, short. I found that I wasn't the best suited, quite frankly, for banking. Yeah, I could do it, but it just something that didn't really, like it rewarded people being just cogs in the machine and compliance. And I felt like I had a very entrepreneurial spirit and I wanted to try something that I thought would really make an impact, but also allow me to just do my thing. And I found Republic and Republic was just a perfect intersection between something that's cutting edge something that had social impact and that it was also a blend between finance and tech. I was a non-tech person and I didn't think I could be in tech, but I was like, if I have the finance background, I feel like FinTech is the closest thing that I can bring my professional skill sets and then transfer them here. For those of you who don't know, Republic is a spin out of AngelList that allows anyone to invest in startups previously just for professional VCs and for accredited investors. And now we vet startups on our platform and you can invest as little as $50. It's incredibly inspiring because democratizing access to both fundraising and investing is key. 40% of our startups are led by women, 20% are Black and Latinx, and they hail from over 30 states. Another sound effect for a round of applause real quick. Yeah, exactly. So I'm so excited to be in my second year there, now as head of venture growth and partnerships. And besides so that- How many times been- did you get promoted at this place? I, I think that that's also something to note. <laughs> This is my fourth promotion, so <laughs> we move pretty fast here, I think. As a, and I think what's awesome about tech is, too, is that if you work hard, if you grind, and especially if you basically take the investment banking hours and you apply them to tech, you can get very far. And besides that, however, I also am a scout for Lightspeed, which has just been an incredible experience so far, where I'm focused on companies that improve people's lives and well-being and specifically Femtech and Silvertech. And I'm also now an investment partner for the Community Fund, which is a $5 million fund backed by Flybridge that brings together 10 investment partners to invest in companies that are community focused. So yeah. Dope companies, by the way. Sorry? Uh, you want some dope companies, by the way. Exactly, yeah. So I'm truly blessed to be have access to these three great platforms. And that's a little bit about me. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> no. I said that you were interesting in venture and out of venture. And it's very clear that you just left out the whole time. Tyler, what do you have against me? <laughs> the, 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 the fact that you are in the art world as well. Mm. Yeah, drop those two bombs. I mean, this is this is our first exclusive, by the way, I guess, if you guys want to put that in the podcast. But I'm officially announcing, I guess, that I'm a signed model in New York City. And I just did a killer one that gets Fashion Week. Come on. <laughs> Yes, I've done Fashion Week. I've done both men's and women's Fashion Week, fun fact. 
that got covered in the New York Times paper, WWD. I also did a campaign for Tom Ford. And not only do I get to invest in Femtech, but I also get to model for them. So I just uh, did a holiday campaign for Thinks. And yeah, this is, it's been great to work with brands that I used to buy from like Macy's and just have that experience uh, to be creative really in the field that's not necessarily VC uh, tech and all that. And what else you leaving out? <laughs> what? What? Because I, I seen you on a TV. I seen you on HBO. I thought. Oh, oh, there's that too. Why? You're really trying to dig up everything. You, you see how I'm sweating right now? Uh, I mean, the <laughs> listeners probably won't, but uh, I, yeah, I also, I guess I'm an actress, a SAG actress that has been on HBO, a couple of featured roles. There was another one that was going to happen, but COVID, COVID was stop that. But you'll see me soon in a couple of movies actually in 2021 when they come out, hopefully. Like, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I went to, I tried to go to a casting with Cheryl once. She got a call back. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, Tyler, for being real on that side. <laughs> okay, so next question. How the how I'm not gonna use profanity this time. So mm-hmm. how do you balance being a boss and overcome people trying to put you in a box? Oh uh, yeah. I so earlier in my career, right, when I was just trying to fit in, quite frankly, especially coming out of a machine like Harvard that just <laughs> wants everyone to go into investment banking or consulting. It it was it took a while for me to figure out that this wasn't a thing because I really wanted it so bad to really be part of this institution that I was the only Latina. I like there's not that many minorities out there. Like it was just so incredibly, I guess, demoralizing on that side because I wanted to be my full self and I couldn't. And so it took me a while to build that confidence to say, I'm actually okay being (laughs) outside of the box, exploring all new areas, making sure that I was happy with who I was. And even during like my private debt equity time, I I had more time, thankfully, (laughs) because they pay you more and you get to work less hours. But that's when I really tried to start balancing out more modeling and acting along with my professional career that I didn't necessarily have to just focus on one. I could do all these things and do them well, now that there's three different things on my plate, <laughs> it's been a little bit harder. <laughs> and so on a professional side, and but that's just, I think if you're not outside of your comfort zone, you're not growing. And so I'm in constant state of growth and also sleep deprivation. <laughs> so I don't know if anyone here has read the book, Excellent Sheep, The Miseducation of the American Elite, William Duress. <laughs> I saw those in Instagram stories though. So you have <laughs> you definitely dropping some gems out here. You were the embodiment of the of the person who went against that system. Go crazy. And this is where we end the podcast right now because I can't, we can't top that. We can't top it. <laughs> All right, no, no, no. Okay, okay. Go post Let's, that on uh, my website. This <laughs> is for VC, by VC, for VC on the FUBU Energy. Let's dive a little bit into, can you, are you telling us a little bit about Republic and like how the community can get the most out of the platform mm-hmm. and, and also like how us venture folks can advise our retail investor friends on how to get access to, to venture through platforms like Republic? Yeah. Okay. So that's a loaded question, but I'll break it down into a couple of things. So one is a lot of VCs are actually not accredited investors. <laughs> um, <laughs> they'd be out here on Angelus. <laughs> not me up. I see you guys. In which case you are able to start building your investor track record through Republic compliantly, legally, with this little $50. And not only that, but you can also use this as a pool of talent where you can actually source your deals through us. And we've found out both directly and also indirectly that VCs are sourcing from Republic. <laughs> it really, we focus mostly on pre seed and C companies, although with the SEC changes last uh, week that allow us to raise from 1 million to 5 million starting in 2021, that will probably change to pre seed all the way servicing through Series C companies, C or D. And the reason why, by the way, any company runs a campaign and wants you, the non accredited VCs, any retail investor out there to invest is because not only do they fundraise and get the capital that they need to thrive, but they also use this as a way to reward your earlier stakeholders, bring them into this community so that you're lifelong brand ambassadors. You will ride with them as an investor until the IPO or get acquired. And they want you to be evangelists. So that's why I think it's so important to have people who are already in this investing world to go and look at republic.co, make sure that they are able to build a portfolio that 
holds true to your values and what you want to build, track them and figure out at the end of the day, are you a good investor or not? <laughs> right? Or are you like, or what, even what industries are you interested in? What's nice about our pages is that we have basically what is in pitch decks, but in just deal, deal page format. And we have every we have basically every industry in the sun. So I think it's so important to cultivate your community, cultivate yourself as an investor and yeah, make sure that you're part of something um, bigger than yourself. I think Republic in the next five, 10 years is just on the trend of this democratization that more and more people are seeing through either rolling funds or smacks or all these different things. But the way to really change finance is by being creative. And the more that we're able to do that and build our community, the better. <laughs> you jumped ahead. Our next question was about <laughs> oh, no. like a two minute rundown of the SEC shifts and what that means for the community. But it looks like it's just going to enable your platform to scale. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It's not just that. I think something that I did also want to touch upon is that the SEC also allows for testing the waters. Testing the waters essentially allows for you to publicize that you're going to run a campaign before actually legally filing the fact that you're going to run a campaign. And so before you couldn't say, hey, I'm going to be selling these securities because that just wasn't legal. And now what's really cool is that specifically like underrepresented founders who don't necessarily have friends or family and that's like money and all that, they can actually build their community and market ahead of time so that by the time that they actually run a campaign, they'll be able to have a head start and kind of soft circle those checks so that then they have a much greater chance of having a successful campaign. The average raised on our platform is at 500K as of last year, and that's really great money, especially if, if you're an underrepresented founder. And so I think this will really be game changing for them to make sure that they're getting the money when they need it. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yay, support oh. underrepresented founders, guys. Partner with Republic, love us. <laughs> Make a uh, better way to phrase it, make some money. <laughs> also, <laughs> founders go hard. Also, very true. It is a smart decision and your fiduciary duty, y'all. <laughs> so, you got to tell us about the community fund and the Lightspeed Scout program. You're you hooping on us with those too. Break it down. Yeah, we could talk for so long. And so, for the Lightspeed Scout program, I'm just I'm truly blessed to have been selected as part of this inaugural cohort of amazing black and brown folk who they're betting on the fact that will be the future of VC and investing. And they essentially give you about a quarter million to invest in companies that fit your thesis. As I mentioned, my thesis is company that improve people's lives and well-being, specifically femtech and silver tech. Both of those are considered quote unquote niches and are, that's absolutely not true. <laughs> firmly believe that's a, that's a very overlooked opportunity. And but yeah, I'm actively looking for startups. So if there's any startup in particular that fits the bill, please let me know on that side. And then on the community fund side, as I mentioned, we're able to deploy out of this $5 million fund, 50K checks into startups that are focused on community and are essentially community. And that's is like, they are creating a sales and marketing flywheel that will continue to uh, spur their growth because the whole thesis around that is that as technologies converge and there's fewer differentiation, sorry, less differentiation, what's really going to set companies apart are the people around them, the passionate creators, users, customers, all of that, that will allow them to have a defensible moat. And, and that's actually similarly how I think already on Republic side is like cultivating that community, making sure that investors uh, get the education that they need to be good investors and like also focus on building our brand that way. And so it ties in the community fund, Republic and Lightspeed all tie in nicely with what I'm doing already, which is not only working with VCs, accelerators, but also supporting founders along the way that might be overlooked. Those are the two other directly investing roles that I have. True. Clay, you want to you wanna kick us off with the 10-minute quick session? <laughs> yeah. So, show at the end of these, we do these quick questions. We have a list of five questions, all meant to be answered in two sentences or less. I didn't realize that. Two sentences. Okay. Yeah, like, all right. <laughs> maybe maybe four and a half. <laughs> yeah, we're like, we're pretty forgiving on length. We've had some that have lasted. Yeah, we've had some that have lasted way longer. The goal is two sentences or less. So first question we have is what are, is a recommendation you hear regularly that you think is bad advice? This sounds awful, but like the social media, like you have to have a Twitter. Like that is not like a real thing. I think some of the coolest people, Tyler and 
I don't know, Clay, if you have a Twitter, but like Tyler, like, oh, like they don't. I got do. five tweets on my Twitter. I only retweet when people mention yeah. me. <laughs> nah, bro. Nah, like, nah, it does exactly. not need to be, yeah, a, a big thing. Is not like, I think people should really just play to their strengths. And, and so, yeah, some people are good at Twitter and it helps them and it gets deal flow and that's great. But if you're not good at it, then take the L and focus on what, what you're good at, which is maybe connecting with founders or like getting referrals or like doing all of that because and that's what really sets you apart a lot. Of, and this actually might get to another question that you have. Okay. Okay. It's funny. I was actually talking about that with a buddy last night. Like what the ROI is for investors that spend so much time on Twitter. It'd be shocking. I have a Twitter. Actually... Don't get me wrong. Everyone follow me out here, but <laughs> it's only because <laughs> I'd be missing people during COVID. Like the minute, minute that COVID ends, this entire era, I'm the streets again. Like me, yeah. people, like right. I'm such an extrovert and I definitely, similar to Tyler, actually like read energy and that's how I get energy myself. And I needed a social life during COVID. And yeah. Twitter was it. But yeah, yeah, that's my two cents on that thing. Cool. Next question we have is in the past year, what new belief, behavior, habit has most improved your life? I'll give credit where credit is due. Tyler, uh, I think is the king of just embracing life as is and accepting who <laughs> you are, right? I think it's like, it's very inspirational. And he's been one of the like most active people in telling me to embrace the whole modeling and acting side. I think I had, from the finance side, you have to be just all finance all day, every day and not say anything about, oh, you're modeling or you're acting. Like, I feel like they wouldn't take me as seriously, especially as a woman, as a woman of color. That's a real fact. Whereas in tech, and I'm so blessed once again to Republic for like allowing me to bring my full self to work. And I've just realized over time and establishing myself in the industry that I could say I'm a model and an actress and that's great. <laughs> and that's who I am. And that's what I, I, I want to do concurrently. I think his, his let things be vibe has gotten to me. And that thing that's really helped me during COVID. Nice. Shout out Tyler. All right. <laughs> next question. Aside from having to say no all the time, what's the worst part about venture? This is what I was referring to prior. I think the smoke and mirrors is just terrible out here. A lot of people saying that they do stuff when they really don't. Like, I think Tyler is one of my fans because he knows I have the receipts. <laughs> like, he knows, like, I have the picture. <laughs> I have the stuff. Like, I have all these things that I do. And and I generally like to real G's moving signs like lasagna. So I generally <laughs> not say those things, but he pulls it on me. Whereas a lot of times in VC, they will have all these titles, nothing. Or they'll ha say that they do things, but they really don't. Sometimes they'll, you know, say, oh, they fund underrepresented founders and really just waste their time. <laughs> or they might not even have a fund, but they say they have a fund. And it's tiring because you don't really know who's who. All so these rappers. <laughs> just have that on Google <laughs> podcast. Like, all these rappers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so it's, it's when you meet real ones, you definitely want to keep them close. And that's what uh, my policy is to have a good group of friends. Okay, we're coming down to two minutes. So we got to sprint these next <laughs> Okay. 100%. All right. Play, run it. Uh, okay, okay. So one minute answer, sure. Junior VCs are those aspiring to break into venture. It's similar to what I said prior, but really just figure out what you're really interested in, play to your strengths, and then use them to meet new people. It's all about connections and not only connections, but making meaningful connections. So like, I think being helpful to others and doing things with good intentions, I think will get you a long way. 100%. That piece is heavy. Intention is so important. 100%. <laughs> All right, last piece. Who's a mentor that you'd like to give credit to? She's a mentor, actually, that got me into Republic in the first place, Bianca Caban. She is basically me, just seven years older, and therefore you should definitely have her on this podcast. But she went to my rival all-girls high school, and then she went to Harvard. She also did Barclays, and she's just been in all our, like, all out inspiration and I cannot thank her enough for giving me the confidence to even apply to Republic and, and teach me her ways and partnerships and life. And I think I've had really bad mentors too, especially all their Latina mentors, right? <laughs> Not all kinfolk is kinfolk, right? For sure. And I learned, learned that the hard, hard way, but she's one that I will be forever uh, grateful to have her friendship and mentorship and sponsorship, which is different. Last one is who do you want to hear on this podcast? Outside of the person you just mentioned who sounds magnificent. Right? <laughs> I was like, why am I giving you two? I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? 
You don't ask, you don't receive. We need it's it all. <laughs> I just gave. Who else would be awesome? Wait, did someone recommend me? Is that what? <laughs> no one did. I mean, no one loves me. You're one of my favorite people, so okay. I had to I'll get you on here eventually. <laughs> I know. You know, I think who would be great? I'm starting to think of right now. Oh, one of the low people who are like floating on the radar by a real is a uh, Kofi Ampadu. I don't know if you know him from SKU. He is such a G when it comes to consumer and does not promote himself enough. <laughs> and quite frankly, he's one of the 14. Uh, I did write an article around 14 emerging black and brown fund managers that have at least some commitments already in their fund. So they're on their way to supporting founders. And he's one of the guys that I think would be really good. Another actually guy actually is, is Marcos from Vamos Ventures. He's been hustling. He's one of the He's been hustling to raise his fund to fully, just solely fund Latino, uh, Latinx entrepreneurs. And he's just incredible. And he's a rock star and he's going to go a long way. And I'm just, those two, I think, would be uh, really great uh, podcast folks. Let's make it happen then. Look, I know we're, we're already a minute and a half over. <laughs> uh, and I know you probably, got, you probably got a lot on your plate today, balancing three top one percenter roles. <laughs> We're going to let you bounce and just send you a ton of praise and love through the airwaves. Thank you for coming. Ooh, I, I feel it already. Oh, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Sending it back, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye. Peace. Huge thanks again to Cheryl for coming on this week. Tyler and I both had a ton of fun recording with her, learned a lot from it, and we hope that each of you are able to pick up something valuable from the talk. For next steps, if you're an investor and have not already signed up to join, we encourage you to check out our website at www.confluence.vc to submit your info to become a member. If you have any feedback for us, please feel free to reach out directly either to Tyler at tyler at gpv.com or myself at clay at Hope to hear from you all soon.